Our gospel today presents us with a pretty familiar parable, but probably one of the most troubling parables for Jesus' audience to comprehend. And it's even more difficult and troubling for our minds to listen to it today. The parable challenges our sense of fairness, and I'm sure it bothered Jesus' audience in much the same way, just like those who were first hired grumbled with the wage they received. Fairness versus mercy. They seem to be at odds with one another. Now, we want everyone to get to heaven, but it still bothers us when someone who has been practicing evil throughout their life is granted a reprieve, a stay of execution, maybe even a pardon. How does God justify that? Okay, God is merciful, and we too need to be merciful. But shouldn't there be some sort of consequence for their actions? Some form of punishment? No, on the other hand, those who have labored all their lives trying to be a good Christian, how are they rewarded? Now, over the past few years, I've been able to share with you stories from Lebanon Correctional. Stories about God's grace transforming lives inside the institution. And these are truly heartwarming stories. But there are other stories that need to be considered. I've never taken the time to talk about the people who put their lives on the line to apprehend those who now live inside those walls. Police and first responders who risk everything to protect the community as well as the lawbreaker. Officers who have lost their lives. Officers who have to deal with the memories of gun battle that haunt their sleep. Families that wonder their spouse, their father or mother, son or daughter will return home that day. These are the laborers who showed up in the morning and have labored all day, keeping us safe while they confront the evil that besets us. How do we reconcile this with the parable with these individuals and families? Do their lives, their life experiences, their day-to-day -day confrontation with evil run at odds with God's mercy? To answer that question, I suggest we rethink the context of the parable. Question. What do we consider the vineyard in the story to be? Is it the secular world? That place where both the weeds and the wheat exist together? Yeah. We can interpret the vineyard to be that secular world we exist in. But what if the, the vineyard is actually the kingdom itself? The kingdom of heaven. The mystical body of Christ. Those laborers who were brought into the vineyard, into the kingdom at the early hours of the morning, are akin to those of us who were baptized at birth, raised in the faith, 
and who labor to live our lives in that faith. But people don't always enter into the church at birth. Some enter into their teenage years, some as adults, some at the end of their earthly life. Entering into the vineyard, that's the goal. God is always inviting us to enter into the vineyard, to become a member of Christ's mystical body. And just like the landowner who repeatedly goes out to bring others into the vineyard, so God is always seeking those who are not a part of the kingdom to enter into that kingdom. And when we enter into the kingdom, we do so accepting the mission of Christ. Accepting the cross, willingly sacrificing our wants and desires for the benefit and good of others. Within this vineyard, we labor for Christ. We labor with Christ. And what is that labor? To bring others to Christ, our reward, the wage we labor for is eternal life with God. And there is no greater reward possible. Paul tells the Philippians that his life here on earth is now Christ's life. His labor, fruitful labor for Christ. He knows that when he dies, he will attain that ultimate union with Christ. But remaining in the flesh, he brings others to Christ. That is a labor of love, fulfilling Christ's mission to bring salvation to all people. This is God's way, a way which is far above our way, and his thoughts of fairness far exceed our limited thinking about what is fair. You see, we can do nothing to earn our way into heaven. That's God's gift. Our reception of that gift is to agree to labor, to love. So fairness and mercy, they don't really conflict with one another if we see our life as a life in the kingdom, a life for Christ and with Christ, a life that is no longer our own but a life that is Christ. And our reward, the gift of that faith that allows us to enter into that kingdom.